Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Masood Olia, and I'm a professor in the uh, School of Engineering at Bentford University. Uh, and I'm back with uh, another video related to calculation of moment of inertia uh, for a typical I-beam, um, a symmetric I-beam. Uh, as always, I really appreciate if you subscribe to my uh, channel uh, and um, like the video. Uh, that would help for my video to get to other people and have more audience. And uh, I will al always uh, create new videos, hopefully on different topics uh, related to statics, uh, mechanics of materials, and dynamics and system dynamics and vibrations. This particular uh, topic that I have here, moment of inertia, could be uh, related to uh, statics and in uh, for mechanics and material for calculation of bending stresses or even buckling uh, calculation of um, critical load. In any case, uh, the objective here is to calculate, uh, to determine, you want to find uh, the two moment of inertia with respect to the two major axes, the axis that passes through the centroid. So those are the axes that are important in calculation of, say, um, you know, bending stresses. So bending could be about x-axis or about y-axis. Generally, the bending is about x-axis for a typical I-beam. So in other words, loads are coming in this direction and the bending will happen uh, about x-axis. Um, so I'll show you, uh, there is an easy way actually to uh, figure out I with respect to x-axis. You could actually use um, parallaxis equation but you don't have to. Think of this I-beam, guys, as a rectangle that has the size of, let's see, the, 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 the width of the flanges is 300 millimeters, as you can see, the 150 and 150, right? By what? By, let's see, uh, 200 from the bottom to the center, another 200. So this is a 300 by 400. Notice that the x-axis, let me move my picture over here. So I can insert um, or draw different colors. So you see the x-axis is the same x-axis that I have here going through the centroid. But then what if you take these two pieces out? See this piece, right? And this piece out. That would be actually your I-beam, right? So now you're going to subtract what? Subtract this piece, right, and the piece here. So actually you can push them together and make it what? The thickness of the web is, uh, looks like it's 20 millimeters right here. And so you're taking 20 out of 300 and then looks like a 20 here uh, and a 20 here out of 400. So you're talking about 360. So it would be like taking, uh, a 280 by 360, right? Again, notice that the, uh, the centroidal axis, x-axis is where it's supposed to be. I don't know why this got so thick. Let me go to a thinner situation here. There we go. All right, so this is the, uh, the same x-axis. All right. So you guys know from probably other videos that you've seen it in your class, uh, on your, in your course, that I, for a rectangular section, and this is an important formula for uh, if the, the width is B and the depth is H, with respect to this axis, call it X axis, which is kind of like R axis here, is equal to what? This is a formula that you have in a table, 112 BH cube. I mean, any engineer, mechanical engineers, especially civil engineers, that that they should memorize that formula. I mean, it's very important for structural engineers. In any case, so why don't we do this? I with respect to x-axis for this guy is 112. B is 300. And I'm going to leave the units in millimeters. And the H is 400 Q minus 112. Remember, you took this 20 out, so it became a 280. Now the B is 280, and the H is what? 360 cube. So that's the quickest way that you can calculate your I sub X. 
So let me give you the answer. I sub x comes out to be 511 times 10 to the 6 meter, millimeters to power 4. If you want to convert it to meters to power 4 for this sake of calculating bending stresses in the equation sigma equal mc over i, remember the i in the denominator in this flexure formula is the i that you're calculating as long as it's, your moment is about x-axis. So this is m sub x and this is i sub x. Uh, the conversion factor from millimeters to power four to meters is 10 to the negative 12. So if you multiply this by 10 to the negative 12, it becomes 5, 11 times actually 10 to the negative six meters to power four, just in case you wanna change that to uh, you know, a more typical unit. All right, what about I with respect to Y axis now? Uh, let me go ahead and erase this. Um, as you've already seen how we handle that situation, right? What about I with respect to Y axis? See, I with respect to Y axis, um, basically, you see here, if I put Y axis, B and H will switch. So you don't even really need a formula. Uh, so it becomes 112 HB cube as if you rotate the axis 90 degrees. So you see, uh, see this Y axis passing. Uh, so this is called the web, right? I don't know if you're familiar with the terminology and this is the flange of the beam. So you got an I beam is two flanges and one web. All right, look at the web. The web, the Y axis is kind of like the X axis here with a B of what? Uh, two, 360 actually, you see that? And the H of what? 20. So you see, for the web itself is 112, uh, 360, 20 Q, right? And then what do you have? You have two flanges identical, so I can double that. Uh, 112 what? See this Y axis? The B becomes 20 and the H becomes what? 300, right? So 20, 300, remember two exactly the same flanges, 112 uh, HBQ or BHQ, whatever you want to call it. So it's very easy to find I sub Y. And look at the numbers, guys. Um, for I sub Y, you're going to get 90.2 times 10 to the 6 millimeter to the power 4. Of course, you can change it to meters to power 4. For a typical I beam, guys, I with respect to X axis, which is usually the way uh, these beams are being loaded and the bending is about that major axis, X axis. I sub Y is much smaller than I sub X. It's about five, more than five times as smaller or I sub X is five times larger. What's the meaning? In another video, I have told, talked about the meaning of moment of inertia. The larger the moment of inertia, the tougher to bend about that axis. So you see, it's much more difficult to bend about X axis or it, there's more resistance to get uh, flexed, right? That's why that formula is called flexure formula. To bend it about X axis than about Y axis, almost six times more difficult, okay? I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll come soon with more videos and different topics, as I said, if you like my channel, please subscribe and like the video. I will see you soon. Uh, thanks again.